Hello! Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this lovely little bedside cabinet or nightstand. The drawer is opening and I've made it look like a double drawer here by simply scoring a groove across the centre. I've used cocktail sticks for the drawer knobs and we've got this lovely little shelf at the bottom here for extra display space. Now as usual the cutting list is in the description box below. So let's get started. Okay, so begin by cutting all of the pieces you need apart from those needed for the drawer. And as usual, we'll construct the unit first and then measure the drawer opening. And that way we can get a more accurate measurement for our drawer pieces. And I've got two lots of pieces here as I'm going to be making two bedside cabinets at the same time. Okay, so we're going to begin with the leg pieces. So turn them sideways like that. And we're going to begin by making a pencil mark three millimetres or one eighth of an inch from what will become the bottom of each leg. I'm using my smaller rule here because it's just easier to manoeuvre. And you want to make the pencil mark on each leg using the rule. Don't sort of mark them up and then use the previous leg to make the next pencil mark. And that way it's just more accurate. So three millimetres from the bottom of each leg, one eighth of an inch. And do your little pencil line. So we're now going to attach a side piece between each set of legs. And the side pieces are the ones that you've got three of. So you've got two sides and a back piece, all of the same size. So just put the back piece to one side for now. And you want to make sure that the little pencil marks we've just made on the legs are facing inwards like that. So just turn them so they're both facing towards the side piece. And that's because we need to be able to see those when we come to attach the shelf at a later step. So I've got some glue here on my piece of card and a cocktail stick to apply it with. And I've got a spare cocktail stick close at hand as well to remove any excess glue. So apply glue to each side of each side piece. Pop that back down on your surface and then you want to attach it so that the side piece is sitting right at the top of the leg. We want a nice flush line along the top there. Good press into place and then bring your next leg in. Make sure again that your pencil mark is on the inside. And again, make sure that's sitting flush along the top. And what you can do again is bring in a spare piece of strip wood and just press that along the top there and then make sure all pieces are pressed up against it. And then you know you've got that nice flush top which will make it easier when we come to attach our top piece. So just slide that along your work surface. I'm just going to hold that together while I remove that excess glue from along the joins. Always easier to do it when it's still tacky rather than waiting for it to dry because then you'll have to sand it away. Like that. So slide that piece along rather than picking it up as it might just fall apart. And that can be left to dry and then do the same thing again with your remaining side and set of legs. And again, that piece can be left to dry. Once you've allowed the side pieces to dry off enough so that you can handle them without them falling apart, turn one over like that so that the flat side is facing you. And then take the back piece and apply glue along one short edge. And we're going to attach this piece so it sits to the front edge of the back leg. So it's right along the join between the back leg and the side piece. So press it into place like that. And then once this has dried off, I'll pick it up and I'll show you what I mean, but I'm sure you know by now because this is usually the method that I use on pieces of furniture like this. I'll press that into place, so if I just pick that up like that and you can see it's sitting towards the front edge of the back leg so you've got that little ridge at the back there 
the same as we've got at the side like that again remove any excess glue from along the join from along the inside edge as well don't want anything blocking the drawer from going all the way in and then bring in your top piece and you've got two of these pieces a top and a bottom and this is going to sit on the inside edge of those joined pieces like that so that it's flush with the top of the unit so apply glue to a long and a short edge get that into place so it's sitting right along the top of the side piece you've got a nice flush line along there make sure that corner's pushed right in and then again you can bring that back piece in to meet it and that will square the whole thing off and your spare piece of strip might come in handy here as well and you can just press it against the top like that and make sure you've got a nice flush top edge there And again, remove your excess glue. Just press that corner in a little bit more. Don't want any gap in. Like that. And then we're going to do the same with the bottom piece again on the inside edge of the joined pieces like that. making sure you've got a nice flush edge along the bottom there press it into the corner and then check you've got a flush edge along the back as well get rid of that bit of excess glue there good firm press and then just make sure there's no excess glue on the inside again just because we don't want it drying and then blocking our drawer from sliding in smoothly so I'm just going to leave that piece to dry off for a moment while I construct my other cabinet so whilst those pieces are drying bring in your shelf piece and that's the piece that you've got left the square which is cut from your 1.5 millimeter sheet wood so you've got the 0.8 2.5 and then the 1.5 and it's the 1.5 or the 1 16th of an inch that you want and that's the shelf piece and we're going to cut a little square from each corner which is the thickness of the legs so in this case three millimeters or one eighth of an inch of course if you're using a different thickness for your leg then you would cut the square to that size so just make a little pencil mark along each edge of the wood go in that way three millimeters one eighth of an inch and then turn it and then you can make the little square so you would then go like that like that same at the other side So you've got a little square marked out at each corner and then bring in your craft knife and you want to begin by cutting against the grain. So my grain goes from top to bottom here. So I'm going to cut this way. And by doing that, you'll prevent the wood from splitting. So just use the tip of your knife, cut against the grain and then you could turn and snip the piece away like that. So again, against the grain. You do that at each corner. And it's always better to go on the inside edge of your pencil lines than to cut too much away, as you'll then have gap in around your shelf. that 
So bring in your constructed piece now. And you want the grain to be running in this direction. So this is going to be the front of our unit. So place your shelf so that the grain is running in the same direction as the front of the unit. And we're going to position it just above those little lines that we cut down there, that we made down there. So we'll put a little bit of glue into two of the corners. Like that. And then position it so that you can just see that little pencil line below the cutout. Like that and press that into place. Once the glue's begun to take, we can pick that up and just squeeze the piece together. So really carefully pick that up and then you can squeeze the legs in like that to hold that into place. Which you can just see those lines and then you'll know your shelf is level. You've still got time to manoeuvre if you need to before the glue has completely set. And then whilst you're still holding on to it, you can remove the excess glue like that. Just giving that another squeeze. And I'm going to carefully put that piece down. Leave that to dry for a moment. And then attach the shelf to my other unit. We're now ready to attach the remaining side, so apply glue to the edges of the top section. And then you can just put a little bit in each of those corner cutouts. And then place the side bit on first so that it's nice and flush along the top of the unit there. Just give that a little press and then you can push the shelf into place like that. And again, make sure it's sitting just above those little pencil marks we made at the bottom of the legs. Again, give the legs a squeeze. <laughs> Check that the shelf is sitting where it should be, otherwise you'll have a wonky shelf. I'm having to sort of manipulate the back corner of that shelf into place. So if you need to do that, then sort of push it into place and then hold it so that it stays where it should. And just make sure that your top piece is sitting nice and flush. Make sure we've got a nice flush edge on the inside there as well. Keep hold of it and remove any excess glue. A little bit on the inside there. And I'm just going to lay that down and I'm going to grab some masking tape. I'm just going to put a couple of bits of tape over the side like that. Pull it nice and tight. So I'm going to over the side like that and then I'm going to put a bit across the shelf as well. Just make sure it's staying in position before you sort of attach the tape. piece to dry and then attach my other side piece. So whilst those pieces are drying we can prepare our top pieces. So we'll start with the thicker of the two pieces and we're going to bevel along the front edge which runs in the direction of the grain and both sides. So with your sandpaper flat on your work surface, hold the piece at a 45 degree angle and sweep it towards you, keeping it in that position. And you can see that gives a nice sharp bevel there. And then do each of the sides in the same way. Like that. 
and then you can tidy that piece up in your hand just using a piece of 500 grade. And that will just get rid of any little pulls in the wood. Pop that piece to one side and bring in the thinner piece. And because this is from 0.8 millimetre sheet wood, 1 32nd of an inch, it's more like a veneer. So rather than doing that on the sandpaper, we're going to do it in our hand, again with the 500 grade. So support the piece with your finger as high up as you can, and then just sweep the sandpaper along at a 45 degree angle. And we're just gently beveling this one off. And again, you want to do the front edge, which is in the direction of the grain, and both sides. And then again, you'll have that grain running along the front edge of the bedside cabinet. And it just always looks a little bit neater to have the grain at the front of your piece of furniture. So just like that, being really gentle. And then when you come to go along the front, you really need to take care that you don't snap the wood as you're holding on to it. So again, just really gently sweep the sandpaper along. And you'll find you don't need a lot of pressure for that to start beveling off. Like that. So do that with all of your pieces, if you're making more than one cabinet. We're now going to glue these pieces together so that the straight edge along the back is lined up and so that the beveled sides both face upwards so you've got that nice line facing upwards like that. And doing it this way just creates a little bit more detail. You can just do the single top if you wanted to, just using the thicker piece of wood, but I like to add the bit of moulding and it just creates a nice little detail to the unit. So apply glue to the flat side of the thinner piece of wood and I've got my mini clamps here ready to clamp the pieces together. Make sure you get the glue right along the edges. Try not to get it onto your fingers. And then make sure you've got the flat edge along the back and line it up so the thinner piece is sitting just inside the thicker piece there. You've got time again to just move it around, make sure it's in exactly the right place so you've got that lovely beveled edge along each edge. Like that, give it a good press. Trying to just sort of squeeze out any excess glue so I can then remove it. But I didn't use too much, there's not anything seeping out, which is good. And then you can clamp those two pieces together. And it's really important to clamp pieces, as you probably know by now, as the thinner piece of wood will try to curl away from the thicker piece as the glue begins to dry. So you'll always have that sort of gap in around the edge. You can use clothes pegs for this or clothes pins if you have more of those than you do clamps. But you want something that's nice and tight and going to really secure the pieces together. I'm just going to see if I can actually get a couple more in at the sides there. I might be able to get one more along that front. So I know it looks a bit overkill but this way you, you get a piece that looks like one piece with no gap in. So that can be left to dry and then if you're making a second cabinet do the same with the other two pieces. So as always I advise not to cut the pieces needed for the drawers until after construction of the main unit and that way you can measure the drawer opening and get a more accurate size for your pieces. So again I've given sizes for the drawer pieces in the cutting list but do just use those as a guide and then you want to measure the drawer opening so you want the width 
and the height of the opening and that will be your draw front and I always just deduct less than half a millimetre from each of those measurements so width and height and that will just allow the drawer to open and close more smoothly and then you want to measure the depth and again deduct just less than half a millimetre from that and obviously the thickness of the front and back pieces the height will be the same and that's your side pieces and then for the base it will be the same depth as your side and it will be the width of your front piece minus the side pieces and I hope I haven't made that too complicated but like I say use the measurements I've given in the cutting list as a guide and then just measure the opening and just double check that they are going to fit before you make the drawer up otherwise you'll find that you'll be doing a lot of sanding to get it to fit so before we construct the drawer I want to score a groove across the drawer front which will make it look like two smaller drawers. So turn the piece lengthwise like that and we're just going to do a little pencil mark in the centre of the short edge. Do a little line like that and the same at the other end. Turn it back and then place your rule so it's just below the pencil marks and then bring in your flathead screwdriver and we're going to score a groove across those lines. So hold nice and tightly onto the rule and just make a very light score to begin with. I think that's somebody at the door. And then you can go in a little bit deeper each time like that. And then she's got a score across the front like that. We're then going to take a small piece of sandpaper, fold it in half and then work that crease along the groove like that. And just sand along there and that will get rid of any rough edges. Like so. So do that with both drawer fronts if you're making more than one unit and then we can construct the drawers. So to construct the drawer, begin by applying glue along each edge of the base piece. Pop that back down and attach the side pieces, making sure you've got nice flush edges along the front and back. Press that into place. And then I'm going to bring in those spare pieces of strip wood again and I find that it really helps when attaching drawer sides to sort of press them into place like that and then you'll get an even pressure all the way along. Good firm press and then just slide that along your surface like that. That can be left to dry and you can work on your other drawer if you have one. You're doing like a little single bedroom, you might only want one bedside cabinet. Really looking forward to making some lamps and things to go on the bedside cabinets. I think the next project for the guest bedroom will be a dressing table, and I've already made the design. So hopefully, I'll get around to starting that within the next few days. Again, give that a nice firm press. Gently slide that along. Now this piece should be dry enough now to handle so that I can attach the front and back. But do leave it a little bit longer if you think it's still a little bit fragile. I just like to sort of hurry along for the sake of the recording. I glue along the front and back edges. Okay, pop that back down and attach the front and back pieces. Again, making sure you've got nice flush edges along the sides. 
You may need to pull your side pieces out to meet the edges of that front piece. Same with the back piece. Oops. And come around that way. And you can sort of pick it up and give it a gentle squeeze. Make sure it's nice and flush. That piece can then be left to dry. Actually, just pull that side out a little bit more. You have to leave that to dry and then finish the remaining draw. So whilst the drawers are drying, we can attach our top pieces. So apply glue to the top of the cabinet, making sure you get right along the edges, onto the top of the legs. Like that. And then bring in your top piece. And we want the straight edge to go along the back of the unit. And that will be flush with the back of the legs. So get that into position and then you want an even overhang at either side and that should be the depth of your bevel. So that bevel should just run on, run on nicely from the corner of the legs there. So get that into position. Carefully hold on to that and remove any excess glue. Don't put too much pressure on that bottom piece of wood under the drawer there. Otherwise you might find that you split it when you're sort of pressing it down. Apply the pressure to the side pieces where there's a little bit more strength. If you can get inside then you can just tuck your thumb in there and give it a squeeze. And then I've got masking tape and clamps here. So I'm going to put a little bit of masking tape straight over the top. And I'll put a piece, get out of your way there, <laughs> put a piece over the back first. Pull it nice and tightly and push it down onto the sides. And I'll put a little bit over the front as well. And again, really important that you secure this top piece into place, otherwise it will just dry to lift. Like that. And as you can see, you've got gapping along the front there, and that's why I like to use clamps as well. Push that over a little bit. I think I can probably get a couple on here. These orange tipped ones are nice and tight. I like using those for this sort of thing. That one in there. And then lay that down to dry. And do the same with your remaining cabinet. Again, if you have one. And this is one of those pieces that you can make your own little adjustments to. You might not want to have the shelf underneath, so you could just have the plain legs. I like to have a little shelf because I think it looks nice with a little book on there or something. Maybe a little plant. Again, it's up to you. You can do that single draw if you didn't want to do the sort of false line across it. Okay, and give that a press down, but without putting any pressure on that piece of wood underneath. Make sure it's flush along the back and that you've got that nice even overhang at each side. Get rid of your excess glue. I think I used a little bit more on this piece. And then again we go into tape and clamp. staying where I want it to. And then a couple of clamps along the front edge there. enough time for the drawers to dry try them into the openings and if you're having trouble fitting them you might just need to do a little bit of sanding so you would sand 
top and bottom and on each of the sides using small circular motions but just sand a little bit at a time and then try it again and if it still doesn't fit do a little bit more sanding but don't take too much off all in one go as you'll find that you've got gapping around the edges. To make my draw knobs I'm going to use a cocktail stick so begin by snipping off the pointed end so with the cocktail stick under your craft knife just roll it along as you apply pressure to the knife and that will make it easier to cut away and it under there and then take a piece of fine grade sandpaper and we're just going to round over that cut end so just twist the cocktail stick in your hand and just sweep the sandpaper over the top and you just want to keep going until you've got a nice rounded end to the cocktail stick lay that on your work surface and bring in your rule and then I want to cut that to about two millimeters long so hold on to the rounded end the end that you want to keep make sure you don't cut your fingernail off and then cut again by rolling the cocktail stick along beneath the knife of your blade like that and the reason I'm using the cocktail stick to make a really tiny draw knob is just because the drawers are quite small if you're just having this as one complete drawer then you could just use one draw knob in the center there and you could get away with using a slightly larger draw knob but when you when you've got small drawers try to use the smallest draw knob that you can so I'm going to make four of these. To attach the draw knobs, just make a little pencil mark in the centre of the drawer or your sort of false drawers. Apply a little dot of glue to each pencil mark. And then you'll need tweezers to handle the little draw knobs and just stick those into place. Get them pressed down. Let those dry off a moment, then you can remove any excess glue. And these pieces are now ready for paint. So to paint the pieces, I'm using an emulsion paint so just a normal household paint and this is a colour that I've specially mixed for the guest bedroom if you saw my chest of drawers episode I mixed a very very pale silvery grey in with a white and I'll be using this for all of the guest bedroom furniture I've got my plastic tray over here where I can then stand the pieces to dry So each of these pieces have now had one coat of paint and then once that's completely dry I shall give that a gentle sand, apply the second coat and then finish with another gentle sand. And there are the completed cabinets and I'm really pleased with how these have turned out. I can't wait to try these beside the bed in my guest bedroom. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that this bedside cabinet is something that you'll be able to fit into your doll's house. And it doesn't have to be used as a bedside cabinet. These would make really nice little side tables. You could even make it wider by extending the width of all of these pieces that go across and using it as a little console table. That might look quite nice. But whatever you decide to do with it, I really hope you'll enjoy building it. And if you do have a go at it, please share your photographs in my Facebook group, Little Bits and Pieces by You. And if you're not already a member, just pop over to my Facebook page. I'll put a link below and you can request to join from there. So coming up next will be the dressing table for the guest bedroom. And then I think we'll do a My Doll's House Diary and we'll start adding some accessories. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>